To my chagrin, few books have reduced me to a pond of tears, but Marcus Zusak managed to trigger an emotional avalanche within me that I couldn't escape, comparable to an unexpected breakup. I'm being a tad hyperbolic, of course, but this novel really does pull on the old heartstrings and perfectly illustrates how humans are capable of both bountiful warmth in a time of darkness and unexplainable evil. Liesl Memminger is a wonderful and well-written character who provides nostalgic reminders and insight into the inner workings of a child's mind. Hans Huberman is a master accordion player and proud papa to Liesl, and foundation of the moral infrastructure that shaped this heartfelt novel. You'll quickly find out that death is the narrator, which may seem a bit gimmicky, but I thought it was creative and congruent with the piece. Grab some tissues, turn on a virtual fireplace, and prepare to be transfixed by some masterful storytelling. Dead Mountain by Donny Eschar. See, I am not a book thief. I actually donate a lot of books, I'll have you know. So this one is just a picture of me holding said book. In 1959, nine experienced hikers threw on their crampons and commenced on what was supposed to be a grand adventure through the Russian Ural Mountains with the objective of receiving a grade three hiking certification, but only one returned. I was blown away by the theory that the author came up with regarding what he thinks happened to these hikers, and I would recommend the book based on that alone. He did a great job with research and he talked with with a lot of family members and government officials and even mirrored the movements of the hikers on that fateful evening. This is one of the most perplexing and layered mysteries I've ever heard about with just as many bizarre suppositions. So if you want to spice up your evening and be left a little bit dazzled by this mind-bending mystery, hop into your Blundstones and go fetch a copy. Public service announcement, read this, please. In an age rife with the plague, polarizing politics, and confusing presidents, I found this read a refreshing splash in the face. If you're tired of overanalyzing and reading the same old end-of-the-world headlines, this tale is guaranteed to give you a much-needed buzz. Hal Jam isn't your ordinary, award-winning author. He is, in fact, a honey-loving, salmon-seeking bear who stole the hit novel Destiny and Desire from poor Arthur Bromhall, a reclusive professor. For some unexplained reason, people don't recognize said bear for the carnivoran mammal that he is and fail to understand the complexities of his nature. Hal does his best to fit in but commits many hilarious gaffes in the process. This book was undemanding, extremely funny, and littered with clever insights into the literary world and all that comes with it. Give yourself a break and jam with Hal for a few days. Quiet by Susan Cain. Doesn't really look as cool on the Kindle, but it is environmentally friendly, so... Aha. Since I identify as someone who is prone to excitability and yammering away, aka a chatty Cathy, I have a lot of sympathy for the true introverts of the world after reading this, and it was neat to read a book that was solely dedicated to the brooders of our society, if you will. Having said that, I know firsthand, and I reckon for other people they've experienced this, it could also be frustrating as a extrovert slash ambervert to be admonished for constantly talking too much and dominating the conversation, but why point fingers and constantly be monitoring who is chatting too much or too little? Can't we all just converge our dissimilar souls into a delicious and eclectic personality stew? I guess not. Though I would actually categorize myself as an introvert, most people I know closely and strangers alike tend to disagree because of my hyper exterior, but I think that's a point in the book in which I would have appreciated a bit more clarification because introversion and extroversion is just how you get your energy. So her definitions of what she believes they are would have been kind of a nice tool to compare and follow along a bit easier. It also would have been very interesting to maybe have a chapter on the 
benefits, just the sole benefits of being a true introvert and explore how introversion and introspection actually go hand in hand and how this results in having more self-awareness probably than the typical extrovert and how this would actually be very beneficial in society, but maybe we'll get that in quiet, a part de. Fun fact, most people are afraid of public speaking because in evolutionary terms, being watched is the equivalent of being stalked by a predator. So tell that at your next dinner party. Super interesting read and whatever vert you happen to identify as being, I hope you enjoyed Thanksgiving with the charcuterie board of personalities that is your family. What an immersive experience. This wild tale, pun intended, was so wonderfully written, I forgot that I was reading it in my cozy abode while eating M&Ms. I was under the impression that my ten-day expedition around the Bowern Lakes on the western slopes of the Caribou Mountain Range was quite the accomplishment. Having said that, I guess I was only seven years old, and my parents were the ones who carried our canoe through the muck and set up camp every night, so I reckon Alex Messenger's adventure was slightly more impressive than mine. This memoir often veers between placid waters and raging rivers, which is analogous to the novel as a whole. Alex manages to convey the profound beauty he felt throughout the entirety of his trip, but frequently notes the dreary reality of partaking in such a voyage. I learned some camping terminology such as portage and vestibule, which I hope to use in the near future to impress squirrels and vagabonds alike. A typical chapter will incrementally unpack the author's teenage angst and recite elementary dialogue among the six explorers. It appears that spending every waking moment in the presence of other people will reduce even the most gregarious extrovert to a shallow pit of small talk. There are many paragraphs solely devoted to describing the food these young chaps ate, which always sounded surprisingly gourmet and preferable to the inevitable sludge that I've been known to concoct. I almost forgot the book was about a vicious bear attack since all of the culinary chat was making me hungry. Unlike our friendly and harmless author, Hal Jam, the bear our talented chef ran into wasn't as charming. I won't give too much away about the bear attack, but I will say it was written in such a detailed and harrowing way, I genuinely experienced anxiety and often felt as though I was the one who encountered the great beast. Evoking such raw emotion from a reader is a rare and admirable feat. I was recently on a hike in the backcountry, and reading this probably wasn't the best idea, since it added to my uneasiness throughout the whole trip. It seems that if we don't attempt to get over our fears and get over ourselves, we will start getting crushed underneath ourselves and be reduced to fragments of who we aspire to be. Near the end of the book, Alex says... This is a fine chance to let go, to win my life by losing it, which means not recklessness, but acceptance. Cheers to that, my friend.